Hey, what is going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and welcome back to another installment of our Let's Play for Magic Duels here, the uh, brand new quote-unquote Duels of the Planeswalkers expansion for 2016, coinciding with the release of the upcoming Magic Origins set. So, uh, if you guys didn't check out episode one where we played through uh, some of the tutorial stuff and the first mission that we had in story mode, go check it out. We are doing uh, the second little mission quest, whatever you want to call it here. So yeah, we will uh, start to duel. So not sure how many uh, how many of these missions we're gonna go through for this episode. Probably like three ish, something like that. This seems like a good number as far as uh, people being interested in watching it in one sitting. So we're playing against the training drone. A turn in magic is broken into several phases. Uh, so there's more uh, the start of your turn. You'll more instructional stuff. All your tapped cards and draw a card. You've already seen the combat phase. I when certainly have. This skill quest starts in your first main phase. A dark slick drake stands between your elvish warrior and victory. Find a way, Find to, a way attack. to attack. And well, we're certainly going to play that island and unsummon. That wasn't too hard. And then we attack for game. Or <laughs> we could skip attack. Not sure that that's the smartest thing to do here. Good job. Casting the right spell at the right time can be the difference between defeat and victory. And we get points for that. We get coins that we can use for booster packs, so that's always cool. Uh, so I uh, yeah, I guess this is gonna start us into our uh, actual game here. So I guess they are going to integrate uh, some instants and maybe some non-creature things into this game. That's what I would assume, because they just gave us a tutorial on playing Unsummon on a creature. Uh, maybe we'll actually have to use the uh, stop timer to uh, interact with the game, too. Not sure. We'll see. Uh, like previous, we will play the Swift Claw. Try to get in there for three, if, if at all possible. Firm attack. We have Eagle of the Watch for our turn three play. Then turn four, if we hit another land, we can go double Glory Seeker. I just love playing these games. The Duels of the Planeswalker games are always really fun. Magic Duels is no different. This guy's playing a two color deck, though, so he's getting all fancy on us. So we have yet to see any uh, customization as far as this game is concerned. Um, however, I'm sure that later in the game uh, we'll be able to customize things for our deck and whatnot. We'll uh, we'll tamper around it. Maybe we'll even try and uh, figure it out after this game. Maybe the uh, the customize feature will be unlocked at that point. All right. So during our second main phase here, we'll play our eagle. And then we'll pass the turn. And it actually passes for us, so there's not much that uh, needs to be done. Main phase two, Eagle of the Watch, okay. So if we hit a land, we can go Swift Claw and Glory Seeker. If not, then maybe we just play like Swift Claw. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, I don't wanna play the skill quest. Um, so it doesn't seem like, uh, it doesn't seem very profitable here. So I feel like we just attack. Because he's going to block the eagle either way. Confirm attack. No real, uh, no real use in using the combat trick right now. And those guys are going to trade. Second main phase. Well, it's telling us to play this guy. I, I would agree. Although, uh, Glory Seeker doesn't seem bad as well. I don't know if they play a... Uh, they play a one... I was going to say, if they play something that we can get over with a 3-3, three, three, that's the only way that that's kind of more profitable. But I guess they could always just block the Elite Vanguard, too. I don't know. 
Uh, Glory Seeker seems okay. Uh, there's no real uh, way in my mind that we get through this without our opponent just trading both creatures off, so I've... We don't get another land, but... Uh, yeah, I guess we just attack and trade creatures. And tell our opponent we are not afraid. I wish I could play Double Glory Seeker, but... Know, our opponent doesn't want to, uh... Block. That's super interesting. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Ah, man! Can, is there a way to recall? <laughs> oh, that was so stupid. I accidentally clicked on that. Oh, well. Alright, we're gonna win anyway. Ah, that was so unfortunate. Uh, the comment section's gonna hate me. Oh, they're gonna attack anyway. That's fine. Oh, man. I knew what I wanted to do, and you guys knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I think we'll just go Double Glory Seeker. We'll attack first. Hopefully not click through our second main phase. Uh, that's just... That's just pilot error. That's just me misclicking accidentally. Alright, Glory Seeker, Glory Seeker. Seek a whole lot of glory here. Man, it, it is so sad that that's just in the graveyard. <laughs> They're not going to do anything. Alright. Ooh, great heart. Something bigger than a uh, two converted mana cost card. Alright, well, I guess Eagle of the Watch is three converted mana cost. Something bigger than three converted mana cost, I should say. We'll attack first, see what our opponent does. See what the AI wants to do. It's always interesting to me uh, what uh, what decision making the AI has as far as uh, oh interesting lightning strike um, as what they would uh, like to do. That's gonna kill. It's gonna kill our two two. The other two twos will trade. Turn will take damage. Uh, it's telling me to play the eagle of the watch. Yeah, that's fine. A little bit of uh, flying vigilance never hurt anybody. However, I was pretty curious as to why they had a red in this deck to begin with, but it makes a little bit more sense that it was uh, for something like a lightning strike. There we go. There's another glorious charge. It doesn't really help us here. We'll attack first anyway. Nope, not falling for it. Hopefully we don't cast it a second time. Mistakenly. I'm more disappointed by the fact that I even let my opponent get any damage in on me. Wanted to go through uh, this campaign with hopefully a uh, streak of not taking damage where I uh, could have had it be possible to have that happen. Words. Uh, do we just... I guess we just win unless... No, we'll, we'll be a little bit more cautious here. Alright, they're not going to do anything. Never mind. <laughs> I thought they would uh, do something and declare blocks. They don't have any combat tricks, so we get them for six. See, uh, the, the one thing about the AI in uh, these games, from what I've noticed, even in the past has been that uh, if you go into uh, the blocker step and the timer's running down without them stopping it, uh, chances are that they don't actually have that combat trick that they're going to try and uh, deal with your cards with. Ah, oh, they think that might be a Planeswalker. Uh, but before we start the, uh, before we start the duel, let's go back. Let's see what we can do with, uh, can we, still, still unavailable here, so we, if 
battle online or solo battle with your own decks. Oh, okay, so uh, that that's where we actually get to uh, play with our own stuff. So these ones are all just pre uh, pre constructed decks, I would assume. I mean, obviously, every time we win one of these, we get an upgrade. But uh, we're being attacked by harpies. Every abled body is needed. You and the other prisoners are released, and the city's last to for to beat back the monsters because words. Definitely drifted off uh, mid-sentence there. Reading, <laughs> reading half the sentence, drifting off, and to block a, usually you know. an attacking creature will deal all its damage to the creature that blocked it but a creature with you'll see trample and group blocking in action in this skill quest group to blocking it, block the mean defender oh okay i understand now blocking with to block more than one creature attack, click and drag one of your creatures to the attacking creature confirm block is that the actual term for it? Group blocking? I don't think I've ever used had to use it in context. I not come to think of it, I, I think I've only ever just referred to it as uh, blocking with multiple guys. Bro blocking. Uh, I don't know. I guess those are the only terms I've ever used for it. And yeah, we trample over for two. Great job. And we get 15. 15 coins for that. Normally, all attacking and blocking creatures That's gonna explain deal first combat to damage. Us. In this skill quest, withstand your opponent. It's gonna show us how to get through uh, a 5 3 with attacks each turn. If it, oh, it's Juggernaut. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, yeah, we'll block, confirm block. Timer counts down. Stop timer. And play Kindled Fury? What's it? Brute, Brute Fury? What, what was the name of that card? Yeah, Kindled Fury. There we go. And for our turn, I'll bluff that we have anything against the AI. The uh, the training bot AI. And we will get in there for our fine two. Potentially more if we have that combat well trick. Done. Damage. First strike is Alright. Now that that's out of the way, we Is this gonna Yeah, this is gonna start us off into our game. I wonder how long uh, these tutorials actually go for. So we have two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop. Well, we are certainly on curve here. Double strike. Flying double strike, two, two for five. Woodland Cemetery. What is this? That's a foil. That's a foil Woodland Cemetery. Come on. Oh, wait, what is... That is an expansion? Starter box. Okay. Not sure what that means. Yep, yep. Swift Claw. Huh. Attack with all. That is, uh... That's the most interesting thing to see in, uh... Just one of these tutorial games. I mean, the foil work looks a lot cooler this time around. That looks pretty cool. But, uh... <laughs> It's definitely pretty intimidating whenever you see a, uh, a Woodland Cemetery playing <laughs> against story mode pre-built decks. Whenever a creature dies, tap that guy. No. We're certainly not going to play the uh, quest. Every, every time we have the ability to skip through those, we will. We'll attack first. Get in there for some damage, if you will. Yep. Get in there, take him to 16. Second main. Uh, 
Really interested to see what else this deck's gonna play. Gloom Widow. Man. Can only block creatures with flying. Alright, well, that's. That's uh, a little bit more convenient, I guess. We can still get in with our Elite Vanguard. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're certainly not gonna... Well, actually, I guess we can attack with it now. <laughs> um, we can attack with our Eagle and just trade with the Gloom Widow, but we can also just play our Great Heart and just block it if they want to attack next turn. Yeah, so we just attack with this guy. Next level. No reason to for wanting ourselves right now. Plus, our uh, Sky Spear Cavalry will get over it if we can Glorious Charge it. And it just plays the 4 2. So luckily I do believe our 4-2 is just going to be the ticket here. Or rather, our 2-1 is going to be the ticket against the 4-2. So we'll attack it and we get the... Uh... Oh, we can actually just attack with both, I guess. There's no reason not. Well, no, because we can block the Gloom Widow. We can block the Gloom Widow with the 2-4 and then block the... Uh, the f... Yeah, but Gloom, Gloom Widow with Great Heart and then we can block... With Sky Spear to the 4 2 because it has Double Strike. Do not show again. The nice thing about these is even when they give you uh, tips on different things, you can just uh, dismiss them for the rest of forever. Another Flesh Mad Steed. Blood Toll Harpy. Alright. Well, unfortunately, that's kind of annoying. Uh, our Glorious Charge is going to be quite good here. Um, realistically, let's see. Well, that's going to get played regardless. Um, so, our Sky Skip... Our Sky Spear can only be blocked by the Gloom Widow and the Blood Tool Harpy. Realistically, if they double block, which I don't think will actually be a thing, we can get over both. Um, it's telling me to attack with both of these creatures. Uh, so they can deal 6 damage total between the 4-2 and the 2-2. Two -two. And the 2-1 can get... So, it seems like this, this, this is the right attack. Because this can't block the 2-1. The 4-2 can trade with it, the 2-2 can trade with it. Yeah, that's... That's... Oh. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Damn it. I missed... Ah, that's so annoying. Alright. Oh, it's all creatures. I thought it was just two creatures for some reason. Alright, that was a little bit more annoying. I missed my uh, stop timer on it. That's okay. Uh, had we actually <laughs> hit the uh, the stop timer before, um, we could have saved the, the cavalry, but that's okay. Another 4-2. Oh well. There's no use in crying over it. Uh, we'll attack with all of our guys. It's a good thing that it stops you for priority between your first first rig damage and normal combat damage because uh, we had the ability to cast it there, but attack with all. Uh, that's the second time I think I've messed up here. guys will trade. That's fine. We'll play our great heart and pass.
I'm trying to gauge how uh, how much time it gives you for the stop timer. Not very much, as you guys can see. It's it's not a huge amount of time. Uh, we're not gonna play that now. Psych out the AI. Uh, yeah, we'll just attack with all. Why not? Yeah, 2-2 two, two to 2-2, two, 4-2 two, two to 2-4. Two, Take them to 5. Guys will trade, and they also have to mill themselves, too. Uh, play land for turn, and then go. The 3-3 three, three again. We can't really get over... Oh, well, actually, yeah, we can. They can't block it. Forgot about that. See, that is why it's important to, uh, to pay attention to detail here. Our, uh... Our creatures can get over that 3-3 guy, and they just drew land for turn, so attack we are absolutely gonna accept that damage because we certainly do not care I'll take a hit to my pride and taking myself down to 16 just to uh, win this game I watch there's probably a pump spell nope it's gonna say there's a pump spell in there that would have just been a little bit more insulting attack with all all right there we go that's a second one All right, so none of the, like these missions that thus far haven't been anything way too, way too difficult. Nothing has been super tasking. Continue. We get another deck upgrade. This one is for 40. Fighting some ogres. Oh, Cyclops, rather. Ah, the, the training drone again. <laughs> Hopefully... Hopefully there's no more of these uh, whenever we come to uh, powerful cards the next stay on the battlefield next flight of them. missions. They have a wide range in this skill quest. Use the enchant. And it's just showing what enchantments do. Attack with all. Yeah, Honor of the Pierce. Certainly a very good card. Did we, there, there was a double block? I'm, I'm starting to question this a little bit. Enchantments are powerful because their effects last as long as they're... I still like the fact that they're rewarding you with, uh... With coins, even just... Just for sitting through these. Auras are a special type of enchantment. Oh, man. As I say that, they give me more. Uh, what does this do? Plus one, plus one for each planes you control and has flying for four. Wow, that's, that's insane. And we pacifism the flyer. See, the nice thing, uh, even just about the animations for things, uh, is that the, the flying creatures will actually move off the table so you, you can see that they're flying. Uh, the visual representation for that is, uh, is pretty nice. I love when they do things like that. I mean, but that that's been a thing that's been in the previous games as well. But well done. One popular strategy they know very well what uh, is recognizable to, to new players. I'll be honest, the music's gotten better too. <laughs> Some cards put plus one, plus one very minute on thing, but. Quest. Your opponent is about to create a massive army. Oh, the skew mob army. Win this turn. Well, yeah, I mean, 
they, they've been able to uh, put all of their eggs in one basket proverbially, getting their entire play set of them out there. Uh, what does this do? Supply line cranes, enters, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Oh. The challenge was to win this turn? What was this, uh, what was this training thing for? Was it for enter the battlefield abilities? Very nice. Oh, Some for uh, plus on one, plus one counters. And piling on plus one, plus one counters until... Yeah. Uh, how to Heroic 101. Alright. Uh, we have our Glorious Charge that hopefully will actually cast, uh... I know, I know. Hopefully we'll cast, um, at the right time. Rootbound Crag. Man, they they really like their dual lands in here. Is this from the same expansion? Yeah, starter box. The Philosopher. Attack with all... All one of them. Alrighty then. Brush Strider, 3-1 Vigilance. Huh. Do we have anything that deals one damage? I love their suggestions for you to uh, play the specific lands out of your hands. I almost want to uh, be the rebel and just select a different one each and every time. Different one, that is. Uh, we'll attack with all. I assume the opponent doesn't block this because they want to get it for three damage and vigilance next turn. Yeah. Practically AI myself. He's gonna attack in. Do we want to block that? Yeah, probably. I don't really want to take three damage. I'll get rid of the three one. Doesn't have trample, so. What is this? Three three attacks each turn if able. Yeah, we'll kill that. We'll kill that next turn with combat trick. If we cast it at the right time, again. But. No, oh, honor of the pure. Sweet. That is actually super, super convenient. So if he blocks a 3-3, we just get over for free. Alright, we'll attack with all. Confirm attack and keep our timer on the block. And there it is. We got there this time. I actually assumed that the first time... I think like every single time I've seen this card, I assumed that for some reason it was two creatures. Like only two creatures get the plus one, plus one until the end of the turn, but uh, I should have known that it wasn't that that way with the times I've cast, and it's just been uh, just resolved without me having to target. That's certainly a 5-2. Uh, well, we'll attack first and get him for 6, hopefully. And play great hard. I know. They're not going to let us. That's fine. So you can either drag out of your hand or you can just click on the card as well. One minor thing. I'm used to uh, playing on the tablet and just dragging them directly out of my hand, so. Font of Fertility. <laughs> Font of You're just giving me the game now, aren't you? Or font if I'm gonna play Primeval Titan or something. 
Nah, they probably wouldn't have put Primeval Titan into this game. I, th I think that they uh, wanted to keep it more true to uh, just the cards that are in the standard format currently, uh, at this time. Uh, which is not a bad thing at all. Far from a bad thing. I think as far as... Uh, as far as teaching newer players, it's much more... Uh, it's much more convenient to be playing with cards that players would be more likely to see. Like, uh, I know in the last one they had, like, the green ramp deck that was playing, like, Pleka Worms and stuff like that. Uh, of course they reprinted Pleka Worm and uh, Modern Masters, but... Prior to that, that card wasn't around for a while, so... I'll put it on the Elite Vanguard. And attack with all. See, nothing way too difficult here. It's still super, super straightforward, but this is, like, this is what it's meant for. It's meant to, uh, it's meant to teach people how to play the game. We beat the mighty Cyclopes. Cyclops, if you will. And then another deck upgrade. Ah, Heliod. Sunblessed Spear. Instructs you to destroy an almighty titan who serves Erebos, a god of the dead. Alright. Oh, this is this is the Titan. Yeah, we'll do this one. This this will be the last one. Fighting the uh, Erebos Titan, or otherwise Grave Titan, if you will. Probably not Grave Titan. abide by their suggestion here. We, we do have Banisher Priest. That's actually pretty refreshing to see. So if our opponent plays a creature this upcoming turn, we get to Banisher Priest it, and then uh, hopefully hit more land drops into our cavalry and supply line cranes. Brain Maggot. Looks like we're not playing that Banisher Priest. Our opponent gets to take a look at our hand and take a card and banish it under... Or exile it, rather, under the Brain Maggot. But if we can get rid of the Brain Maggot, then... Uh, we, we're smooth sailing, so to say. Proverbially. So we can get him for 7 if our opponent doesn't want to block. But otherwise, we get back our Banisher Priest, which is uh, bad news bears for Erebos Titan. Alright. So yeah, of course they didn't want to block. I'm going to attack in, just going to keep on depriving us. Depriving us of our opportunity to take back that Banisher Priest. Just when I think, oh cool, we get a uh, get a nice form of removal here. Just quickly strip it away from us. Grim Guardian. That's super interesting. So it's a constellation-esque deck. So this one uh, has us lose life every time an enchantment enters the battlefield. Whenever it or another enchantment. Yep, yep, that's right. But there's no reason for us not to just attack all out here. Our opponent's in a much more difficult position than we are. Huh. Double Grim Guardian. Wow. <laughs> 
It is like uh, every nightmare that I've had playing in Limited. The double Grim Guardian Constellation draft decks. Uh, huh. Yeah, unfortunately, this isn't great. He can double block. Yeah, I mean, we still... We still attack. There's no real reason not to. Unfortunately, he can double block uh, the two one fours to one of our creatures. And just a 1-1. One, one. Or the 1-1 one, one and the 1-4. Either way. Oh, it didn't... It really doesn't let you choose? Huh. That's super interesting. It didn't let me order... Or maybe, maybe I was just oblivious to it. That's more likely the, the, the thing. Is I was more oblivious to it than not. Maybe uh, I'm just gonna assume that I missed it. That it, I missed the uh, the chance to order. Uh, Quag sickness on yeah, the banisher priest. Banisher priest goes away. Two triggers. And attack. Yeah, attack for one. So th this one was much more. Uh, this game is much more interactive. So the the actual final like boss mission in this story in each storyline is going to do a little bit more for us. Yeah, supply line cranes make our 3-2 uh, a little bit bigger. And then we get to attack with a 4-3. Not sure if our opponent actually takes this. Well, I guess yeah. if they don't, they just lose to 3-5 next turn, so... Good call. If only we can give our creature a plus one, plus one, and double strike for the turn. That would be sweet. <laughs> Doomwake Giant. This is just an insane constellation deck in draft. That is certainly a 4 6. Um, well, the Eagle of the Watch can survive. Yeah, I think we just attack here. Confirm attack. So in my mind, I can't help but feel like they're going to have removal. But I still want to play this cavalry. Like the Quag Sickness, they might have another one. And Quag Sickness also interacts with their constellation as well. So they're gonna probably attack for four. Nah, no, alright, never mind. <laughs> uh do we just win? I guess. Maybe. Alright, so let's be a little bit more. Do we have to be cautious? I guess not. If they kill the 3-3, three, three, then we still have the 3-5 attack again. Yeah, minus 4, minus 4. Yep, yep. Uh, so, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten in for the damage, so we still take them to 1. So, resolve 1. Resolve the other. And, yeah, pass it on up. So this one gives Intimidate. We also lose a life. So it takes us to 10. If they would have done it to the 4 or 6, they could have taken us to 6. I guess they just actually just want to get in there either way. Um, <laughs> do we care? I guess we kind of don't. But. No, we'll block there. Why not? We have two flyers. That is certainly a good card. 
tag with all. And there we go. We beat the Erebos Titan, or Erebos' Titan, rather. And got ourselves 50 more coins to a total of 270 now. So it looks like there's, yeah, there's going to be a cinematic. Oh, Erebos is not very happy about this. Send it right back at him. <laughs> and this is where Gideon gets his spark. And also planes walks. It's actually super sweet that they're just kind of tying all this in. So we have Ordeal of Heliod complete Gideon's campaign. We have a booster awarded. Uh, three Magic Origins boosters have been awarded for completing this story. Alright, we'll take a look at the boosters. He certainly is Gideon Jura, and that is certainly Alara. Congratulations, you've learned about the basics of magic and helped the Planeswalkers spark ignite. It's time to take the next step building a deck of your own. A special prize waits for you in the store. And that will be waiting for you guys in the following episode. It's about time to call it a uh, call it quits here for episode two of this Let's Play for Magic Duels for uh, the upcoming origin set and otherwise magic duels of the planeswalkers 2016 if you want to call it uh so far i actually really like this game uh it's definitely an improvement from the uh the previous ones so uh hopefully you guys can join me in more episodes and uh more things that we traverse here in this game thank you for watching and until next time guys peace out